I noticed my RV was getting harder and harder to stop. Eventually, I found this quick connector hidden inside my electric trailer brake magnets caused all four of my brakes to fail. If you're getting ready to hit the exit button because you don't own a trailer, look around the next time you're in a car. Maybe you have your kids in the car with you and there's trailers and RVs all around you. If a driver can't stop their trailer, you could be in for a nasty collision with a very heavy vehicle. I regularly pull my RV through the mountains. This could have easily cost me my life. Or I could have killed an innocent couple and their kids. I'm not happy about that. I wish I could offer trailer owners a solution to this problem, but as far as I know, all brake magnet manufacturers could be using these quick connectors. The owner of a trailer with four brakes probably won't even notice when the first brake fails. But as more brakes fail, the remaining brakes have to work harder and harder. Each brake can only stop so much weight before the brake shoes melt due to the intense heat buildup. Descending a steep mountain or making a sudden unexpected stop results in the total failure of the remaining brakes. Then look out. These are some of the more important parts of an electric brake assembly. It's behind the tire and drum on each trailer brake. This is the electric brake magnet. These are the positive and negative wires that have to be connected to the brake controller. They feed power through the electric magnet to make it grab the inside face of the spinning drum. That pulls this arm forward, causing this cam to push the brake shoes against the drum. If the power can't flow through the wires, the magnet doesn't work and the brakes fail. Even if the owner makes sure these two connections are absolutely perfect, they can't access or do anything about the defective connections that I'm about to show you. That's because the bad connections are under this extremely hard material. So a brake technician can't see, access, or fix these connections without destroying the magnet. To check these connections, you have to disconnect the wires, connect an ohm meter, and move the wires slightly. If the reading changes, the connections are bad and the magnet has to be replaced. Unfortunately, these connections are so delicate that moving the wires to test it will likely cause the connections to fail. There's no way for anybody to fix one of these magnets, but I can bust one open to show you the bad connections. This is the main iron body of the magnet. This coil of very small coated wire is placed inside the body. And this iron core is placed inside the coil. When power goes through the coil of wire around the iron core, it creates a strong magnetic field needed for the magnet to grab the face of the drum. The main wires connect to the coil in this area. This area is supposed to be held together by that hard material that they pour into the body. These aren't cheap aftermarket magnets. They were the original equipment on my RV. They were made by one of the largest trailer axle and brake manufacturers. But these wires aren't twisted and soldered. They aren't even crimped. Instead, they used these tiny quick connectors. This first thin metal tab puts pressure against the main wire's soft insulation attempting to keep the connection from working loose. The quick connector doesn't really hold the main wire very well, so once that first tab is removed, the main wire comes out pretty easy. The coil wire didn't come out with the quick connector because the connector doesn't hold it very well either. This is the quick connector. It allows the manufacturer to quickly make connections with very little effort. The main wire has a quick connection on this end and the coil wire has a quick connection on this end. But the connection area between each of the wires and the quick connector is very, very small. 
Look at how small the contact area is between the main wire and the quick connector. Look at how small the surface area is in the connection between the coil wire and the quick connector. And there's a lot of current flowing through this path. There's also a second problem with the main wire connection to the quick connector. The main wire is a stranded wire. Look at the size of each strand. Now look at the size of the slot in the quick connector. When the main wire is first installed, the quick connector is pressing firmly on each side of the wire. But the wire has to be moved around during packaging, shipping, and installation, and then it's subjected to road vibrations when traveling down the road. As the wire moves around, the strands spread out. The pressure is lost, and the connection starts to fail. That's why just moving these wires around a little bit to test the connection can cause the connection to fail. How does it make you feel to know that your life depends on these connections and they're being made by a quick connector when they should be twisted and soldered? But wait, there's more. The power comes into the first main wire through these two bad connections that I just showed you, through the coil, and then through two more bad connections made by the second quick connector going to the other main wire. So the power has to get past four bad connections in each brake magnet. If any one of these four connections goes bad, the brake won't engage. A typical trailer has four brakes, so there are 16 bad connections on the brakes of the average RV or trailer. I find it hard to believe that any engineer would be okay with using a quick connector on a brake system. This is negligence. This can and probably has cost people their lives. Such an important and delicate connection should always be twisted and soldered. We need to get this information out to all trailer owners so they realize they need to check these magnets more closely. So please, share this video on forums and social media sites and especially with anyone you know with a trailer or RV. People involved in a wreck with an RV or trailer need to know that these quick connectors could have been the cause. Trailer and RV owners are probably wanting to know, what should I do about this so my rig is safe? I wish I had an answer for you, but I don't. As you've seen, you can't really test the magnets properly without possibly causing them to fail. As I learn more about this problem and possibly find a solution, I'll put it in the information section. So check there for updates and links to related videos. We need to know how widespread this problem is so we can get manufacturers to make proper connections in their brake magnets. So if you suspect your trailer brakes failed due to this problem, please let us know in the comments. Please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.